that's quite a nice composition to make my last painting out of. My last painting. Taking all of this view here, and the wind's going to blow quite strong. And Tim has set up with me because he's going to have his first ever lesson in painting, aren't you, Tim? And we're going to try to paint alongside me. We found a new uh, use for a drying a, a drying horse here a new as an easel. Not bad for a cheap easel, eh? We can't find one. We've only got one easel between us. So there we go. This is a nice scene. It's, um, it's a beautiful scene. Just right for this. You have a great eye. I didn't see what you did, which was so It makes life a lot easier if you start with a scene that's there's a good composition, doesn't it? So just make basic shapes like this. We're finding our simple basic forms one to another. Yeah, and we're simplifying these out almost into abstract shapes. Now those, those, those lumps are going to go up from there, look, so that's worth remembering. Okay. I'm going to go straight for painting and I'm going to mix up colour. This is easiest here um, at the moment. So you'll be using this colour from, with me, yeah? yeah. Well, we'll start with, with the distant horizon here, Tim. So we've got a very light blue going on there, some light grey. So I'm going to take a bit of this cerulean. As soon as I get it on my brush, I've got it mixed and use it. Um, this is just just tap your brush a little bit, just wet it on your hand, just just rub it on your hand like that, just to get it going. Just use the tip of your brush now. Now that is too light at the moment, too blue at the minute. I'm using turquoise, not cerulean. But with a little bit of lemon yellow into that, be surprised how light green that will go. Now this seems quite dark against our sky because we've got a white background on the. You know, take some of that now, tip of your brush. We've got a white background here on the canvas. But now look how light that is. It looks dark against this light canvas, doesn't it? But I want you to just put that in that line across here, all the way across there. To here. That's it. Like that there. So you're going just across. That's it. From, from about half of these trees, you see here. And across there, that's it. That's this cobalt blue now. And I'm going to paint that right up and through here next to it. Just go along next to it like this, look. This is what I'm doing here. Let's come right up into here. That's the top edge. And what I want you to do now is to feather that in. Now feathering, if you watch my brush, I'm going to gently blend. The tip of the brush, ever so gently, look, blend, feather, as if you're tickling with a feather, the paint into the colour below. So I'm using little crisscross strokes. Just the tip of the brush to blend it in. You're doing good. Now this is ultramarine, which is a much warmer blue, with a little touch of magenta to really push our colours up here and get a nice composition of a cloud coming out towards you. the brush, that's it. I'm going to make a grey, and I'm going to make the grey from the cobalt blue with a little touch of brown, and a wee bit of white. Gives me a lovely brown grey. That's going to, have to go up here. It's quite a strong and we're going to get rained upon by this um, cloud for a minute, but it doesn't look as if we might. I want to have this big chunky cloud coming across here and through. I've got to work quickly now because it's not going to last long. This is the trouble with landscape painting in reality. We're painting on plein air. We simply don't have time to, uh, to waste. I'm just flicking my brush across the surface. This is, you're starting on a very difficult painting. If I was going to teach you normally, we'd probably work from photographs indoors. But this is going to really push you. Now, coming into this, we've got a much lighter colour of the cream of the clouds. So to do that, I'm going to mix some, a little touch of yellow ochre and white, not a stronger um, yellow as you might suspect. And this is where we've got to be much more careful because I've got to start placing this on and blending it in down into here. Maybe a little bit too. A little bit too, too dark. A little bit lighter into that. Just the tip of your brush. You've got to use a dry brush more, so you don't want those hard lines. Look how I'm just blending that colour out, look. 
the tip of my brush here. A bit more water on my brush just to get it to blend a bit more up here maybe. Now this, you can see how the grey in the middle here is much, much warmer, isn't it? So I'm going to make quite a strong brown grey to go there. As dark as that. Really bring this dark shadow down through here. It's a very strong grey that's coming down. So that we had the darks already there and all I would have to do is put the lights in. So unfortunately can't do that. So that purple just coming in here, through here. That's it. But you need to now you start using your water a bit more to blend things. So I'm using a bit more water now just to blend things one into another. And this is techniques of, of, of painting this. It's, um, it's, it's complicated, very complicated place for you to start, but just using the tip of your brush, try and get the softness of these clouds. Now a little more warm into that, I'm going to take a little yellow ochre into that warm I just made. This warmer colour now against the greys um, to start making a bringing those blues out as well. Quite a fantastic sky. Hopefully, which we've captured to a degree. Here, I want to be cooler in the background than here, so I'm going to mix some ultramarine blue and the same colour we were doing earlier for the sky, in fact ultramarine blue and a little bit of um, yellow ochre. Just behind the car. So that gives us a sort of blue, browny blue colour, doesn't it? It's, it's going to change later, but I want to get these darks in now so that I can put the lights in over the top. When we get that, we're not going to get very long. We should be getting some beautiful warmth coming with the sun once that light area comes across to us. So I want to get all of these darks in so that I can just mix up my colours quickly and plonk them across here and really enjoy my colours. And make the marks about the trees. So make these marks now. So I'm going to use my brush like that look. Yeah? Yeah. Make the marks about the trees. I'm going to show you what Tim's doing because he's doing a brilliant job over there. Look at that now. His sky's <laughs> really come on. And Darks are, we're going to get them in as I can. But here it's quite dark up in those trees, and we're going to put a lighter colour over the top when the sun comes out, and they'll suddenly come to life. It'll be amazing, it'll be like magic. So we're going to paint these darker colours in now, and then come back to them with the lighter colours on top once the sun comes out. They are that dark anyway at the moment. Um, but we're going to really bring them out later. As I often say, lighter later. In between these vines, where I can paint the vines on afterwards. Really, and you see I'm using a mixture of colours here now. It's not just one colour on my brush. I'm actually letting the brush get off my paint. Uh, I'm, letting the <laughs> I'm letting the brush do the work here. And the paint is actually mixing on the canvas as I go along. So where these little bits of dark are in between the post down here, all the way down there. I've painted those in and even coming down here in the middle there's some dark areas. I'm just going to brush those in lightly. I'm just going to feel some of my dark already starting to feel my tones here coming up here through there and the next job 
Let's see if I've got any more. Yes, there's some darker trees up here as well. Let's see, that tree is doing ever so well for a beginner. Really are. <laughs> no, truly, honestly. I'm not bullshitting. One of, one of the things my past students have said is, Pete, one of the reasons we come to you is because you don't bullshit. You tell us straight. You'll be kind and polite about what we've got wrong, but if we get it right, we know we can believe you. And if we're wrong, you'll tell us. And that's what it's about. There's no point in my giving you false hope and you turn out a load of crap at the end that you're not pleased with. We shall, um, we shall achieve here. I'm putting on a deeper green now, Tim, to put the light again over the top. So here I'm just working. I want to get rid of all of these um, bits <coughs> of white. So we've got greens coming in here. This is what uses the paint, this, um, these preliminary bits like this. So I've almost managed to cover my canvas now, which is great because I can... Whenever that colours on your brush, if you see it somewhere else, use it. Mm. Right, so now I'm prepared to start putting on some of my warmer colours. And one of the warmer colours I've got to do straight away are these buildings up here. So, what do you reckon, Tim, on those buildings? The sort of the yellow ochre colour we've got here mm -hmm. is not far off, but it isn't just... Yeah, yeah that's what near... What we've got yeah. to remember is, I mean, they're almost a slight... Green, <coughs> that um, one colour comes into another, and that the sky will reflect over all of these colours. So if I just put yellow and white, look, it's, it's too... It wants a touch of warmth into it, and then put a little bit of magenta into it. Doesn't any small... You see how much I'm putting in? Very small touches. The viewers can't yeah. see this, but uh, it's quite warm in places on here. These roofs. And the sun is going to hopefully, it's this, the clouds have, co have closed up again a bit. But I'm just hoping we're going to get some sun coming through that blue spot up there. And if we do, it's going to make all the difference, otherwise, it's going to be rather a dull painting. This is the sort of time to pick those things up now. So I'm going to just go down and brush them in a minute. I'm going to use a small one like that. You might need that. So we'll uh, carry on with yours for the minute and just keep that to one side. You, you must get rid of all this big stuff yeah. first. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready now to go down to putting in little bits of <coughs> light in the background. Oh, come on. So what would they have in Ireland? Have the police on to you straight away, would they, or what? Uh, you could face charges, you could face uh, charges of trespass. Because the problem there is uh, if somebody falls or if something happens, somebody, you are as landowner responsible and people don't want to take that chance. That's it, Tim. Look, this, look, this tree here I'm doing now, see this dark one here, yeah. taking the, 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 the light green and just carefully mm, just going mm. over the tips of the branches to give the effect of the of the tree being three-dimensional. Yeah. We've got our darks behind, now I'm going back in with these lights to give the effects of the light shining just across these these objects. Much more yellow just there, so that light is where it's almost gone now. And it hadn't even picked up on the building, which is a real nuisance. I was hoping we're going to get sunlight across the buildings, but it's just not going to happen. Enough sunlight. We needed that sunlight really to get these lights, and they hasn't happened. So I'm going to have to do my best to exaggerate the colours that I have. It's interesting, Tim. You're getting an effect of um, it's almost Spanish uh, style um, because you, you, you haven't yet learned how to blend them. Mm. You've got separate colours. You put colours over these like I have here. 
you'll be all right. It's just learning to blend, and it's not easy with these oils. It's easier because the, the colours blend more easily. Doing okay, seriously. You've got a nat you're a natural at it. Maybe you'll do more of this, eh? Too kind. No, me can't do. <laughs> If you say that, that's not, not true. <laughs> nope, not too kind. Just the truth. You're doing okay. got at the moment because you haven't got rid of all of these darks. You've still got very light colours there. Mm. You want to be really dark so you can put on these, like these tones I'm doing now, these most lighter colours, uh, and make them sing. amazed at what you've just produced him, I tell you that now. <laughs> to say, w work across, look at the way, it's not just lines coming this way, it's not, it's not a waterfall, we've got um, grass coming across, so you're going to paint some of these colours across to break it up into a, a road rather than a waterfall. Watch the angles, now something that is level stays level, so a fence post if it's vertical remains vertical, mm, 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 mm. and if something's coming across here it's only at a slight angle. So what you need to do there, now you've got those colours on, it's, um, I just want to show you how a dark colour amongst all these can suddenly make such a difference. So there's my post, there's a vine just coming in here, and look how that dark colour makes all the rest seem lighter. So we're playing with the opposites. So I'm going to start painting in these dark vines here against those lights. I've got to put some more lights back in there yet as well. But it changes the entire painting. It now pushes those back because this is darker and warmer. It now pushes those other colours back. So his first time ever painting is doing really well. So that's right. Look at the shapes. Very important. Colours and the different greens and browns and, and try and place them. Start to really look and observe because this is the detailed time now. This is where we're going to start. But each detail isn't just any old colour. Each detail will be a certain colour. and uh, put in those shapes and colours and learn by looking. And the more you learn, that's when you come back to doing it from photographs. It's very difficult to paint from photographs unless you paint it from life because you don't have the knowledge of the real colours out here. This is, this is the fun bit though, so say really look for the... What's, what's that bit you're doing? It's, you haven't got the church tower in yours? Well... <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Um, I'd paint that out to get, all, get it off quick. Your building, that, that building is, is that, let's have a look now, you've got that one, that one there, that's the trees. So you want to get, but some of these trees have been lost, you need to get some of these dark trees so you know where you are. Yeah, you really take control and look for those shapes and paint them in, and look for the darks against the light. So if you've got a tree, mm -hmm. paint the dark in first and then put the light over the top of it, that's better. But really look where they are and, you know, you've missed out quite a few trees. But now stand back and look at that. The difference it's made, you've got, you've got a beautiful bit of painting, that's almost like a bloody Van Gogh there. <laughs> it's re no, it's, that really works because you've got the lights against the darks. I'm, and you're I'm naturally totally not confused. Well, it's, 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 I've reached my... Uh, you my haven't, you're just beginning. You're just, <clears throat> this, 
There's times when you want to chuck a painting over your shoulder. No, you don't have that. No, he, do it to me. To, to, you have to now find all of these dark trees, put them in, and then put the light bits on top again. And the same down here. Any of these darks, anywhere. It's so my problem is to blinding, finding colours. You, you, see, that's you, the problem. No, you do it. That's, that's, that's a lot to learn. I'm but clogged. You, you just find the shapes. Just blocked. At the moment, find the shapes. Yeah, yeah. Find all those tree shapes. Put them in where they are, just like a jigsaw. Put the shapes in the right places and it'll happen. So don't just keep tickling the canvas. Look where things are and put them in there. I think you should, we should sort you out some paints and you should have more of a go at this as you go along if you're yourself because you've got natural ability. And that might surprise you because you've never done it before. But, you know, I'm the one with the experience here. And I say I've taught thousands of, and I wouldn't be telling you this if I didn't feel you, you had it. So feel pleased with yourself today that... But it's a lot to learn. My God, it's your first ever lesson. I haven't even given you lessons in colour or drawing or, you know, you've had no other tuition from me. God, I've thrown you in at the deep end here. Um, see, Tim, how I'm putting these light colours now in front of the dark look? Mm -hmm. And that's going to make things stand out three-dimensionally. And I'm putting more detail here in the foreground with stronger colours than I am in the background. So you've just got to find all this yourself, bit by bit. Really observe it, and then we make an impression of it. We don't copy it exactly, we really observe, so it's a bit greener than that. Use the tip of the brush, you can use a fine brush if you want, but look at those grasses, the way they come along here. Where they are, keep looking for colours, really seek for colours. This is what Impressionism is very much about. We're looking for those colours. Now a little bit of yellow into this because I want some stronger little bits of yellow just to really make this. These other greens. You see the difference that makes? Yeah. It's only just putting, I'm really looking for these colours, it's only just putting in little bits of colour here and there. Subtle. So there we go, and Tim's well away, almost finished off his first painting, as much as we're going to do today, because he's learnt so much and he's saturated with it. All of these textures coming up from the posts. The tops of these, actually the tops of these. I want you to carry on building up those when they come. Some of them come into here, they go right away along here, look. Look at the difference that's making. You know, you're suddenly getting a three-dimensional work because you're getting texture in again. So he's signing his picture now as his first ever one. It's great stuff. Well, Tim, thanks, mate. It's been a great holiday. It really has. You know, a lovely week getting to know you. My pleasure and, indeed. And, you know, we've done some painting together as well. And you've done your first ever acrylic. And I think for a first go, I think the viewers are going to agree, that's absolutely fantastic. Especially as you had very little help with it. You're just getting on, following what I was doing. Um, it's been a lovely day for me too, because, you know, I've done my last painting. I'll take back with me. I'll leave the rest here. Um, but yeah, thanks very much. It's been a really good time. No problem indeed. You'll come and see me now and we'll sort things out for the future. I will indeed. I will indeed. Okay, here with Peter Wood uh, uh, in Moriac uh, in the Tarn, and um, it has been most enjoyable holiday, must say. And I opened it today with uh, the painting that I just did uh, a little moment ago, and um, I will definitely be doing uh, something like that again. And uh, it was a great pleasure, and it will be a great pleasure. And uh, thank you, Peter, for everything. And thank and you for everything. Your instructions, and uh, see you very soon again.